This week, I'm Charlotte McBride, not Steve Ross. I know there could be some confusion there. This is Heather alongside me, and I am happy to be here beside you today. I know, and I'm not used to seeing someone not as tan, though. Steve's out tanning like he needs another tan. And someone right. without a mustache, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You All know. Right. But it's a special day because SJ is joining us. Oh. SJ. Charlotte Jr., right? Charlotte Jr. And did you guys plan this out? You have matching outfits. You both have blue on, and yeah, yeah no. that's I great. Try. I try to go with whatever SJ's doing on the day. <laughs> this is a big deal, though. This is your bobblehead doll. This is my bobblehead doll. I won this doll. It was a media competition. Pretty much most popular media personality in Northeast Pennsylvania, where I live and work, and I won the competition, so... And it was with the uh, local AAA affiliate of the Yankees, the Rail Riders, and so I got to go to the game, and the first 2,500 people at the game received SJ. So good times. So obviously I'm going to get one of those, right? I will try to get you one. She's upset with me because she couldn't come to the game up there, <laughs> so she didn't get the free bobblehead. But you know what? They are going for 50 bucks on eBay. Are True you story. serious? True story. Oh, that's so awesome. Go to eBay. Okay. You know what? I think we should have PA Harness Week. I think heads, so. Right? I think that'd be a great idea. So, Ron, Ed, if you're watching, Bobbleheads next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whoever makes that executive <laughs> decision, yeah, we're talking to you. Right. right. <laughs> All right. Enough about the bobblehead. It was a fun honor, though, and we're going to talk about horses now. Of course, because that's what this show is about. So we should probably switch gears a little bit. Anyway, we're going out west, talking about a big race in Ohio. Four hundred thousand dollars on the line. I take four hundred thousand. What about you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> this is a big race because it's three-year-old pacers, and there's one horse in particular. His name is Mick Wicked, and he's the horse everyone has their eye on because coming up, he's going to be in the Little Brown Jug, and that's going to be in September. So everyone's really, you know, looking out to see how this horse is going to do. This is, by the way, the Carl Milstein Memorial, and yeah, the richest race in this 67-year history. Or, I'm sorry, 57-year history of North. Uh, North Northfield. All right, Nick Wicked, one to five, heavy favorite. He's won five in a row now. Let's see how he does. And Mick Wicked is on the move early here. Mick Wicked on the outside gets the lead now in 26 and 1 as they move on and around the turn. Mick Wicked and David Miller, they make the front in their second. All bets off. Luck be with you is third as Miller is applying the brakes with the leader now. Stevensville is racing fourth. On to the outside. Let's drink on it fifth. Then we'll find Tell It Like It Is. Boom, boom, Bally Keel in seventh secret as they come in front of the stands. Mick Wicked on the lead. It's Mick Wicked who's there in 54 and 1. Now moving up on the outside. Luck be with you and Ron Pierce to challenge. In and around the turn they go. Mick Wicked leads the way. On the outside, Luck be with you. Right there, all bets off of Oxton. Third, off stride, then went tell it like it is. As they move on into the back stretch, Mick Wicked's on the lead. On the outside, Luck be with you. All bets off is right there in third. On the outside, let's Drink on it inside Stevensville. Three quarters up in 122 and one around their final turn. And it's Mick Wicked. Mick Wicked still the leader. Right there in the pocket, poised to strike. And the stretch drive is all bets off. On the outside, luck be with you. Top of the stretch. And it's Mick Wicked who does turn first in the Carl Milstein Memorial. On the outside, luck be with you. Inside, all bets off. All bets off from the inside. And all bets off. All bets off. Off, had post two and he was actually on top going past the quarter McWicket he got away third but by the time they went past the half McWicket he was on top luck be with you made a first up bid just couldn't get to McWicket but then like all bets off he gets a perfect two hole trip which is totally where you want to be in a four hundred thousand dollar race right yeah. having the favorite take you around the oval <laughs> all bets off ends up winning outpacing McWicket this horse pays 
and 60 cents. Obviously a shocker in here, yes. And in 150 and three, the drivers of Matt Kakeli. And I believe this is the biggest win of Matt's career. All right, popping up. We have to take our first break, but stay with us because you won't want to miss these big races we have to show you from Pocono Downs. That's next. Bolt the door, accomplished veteran coming off back to back third place finishes. Tonight, it's race night. Where the biggest events roll like thunder all season long. At Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, race night is your time to shine. The world is full of compromises, but not here, not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. right here inside Harris, Philadelphia. For this next block, we're gonna head up the turnpike to Pocono Downs. We've got some great races from last weekend there. We're gonna start with a race, so you're seeing a horse that has a little bit of a household name, I'd say. Absolutely, this horse has been on the show I don't know how many times. More than I have fingers and toes, anyway. And we have, before I tell you who it is, though, it's a non winner the 17,500. Last five purses, $18,000. And the horse we were talking about, number seven, is Bolt the Door. Huge favorite in here with good reason. This is a horse that basically his whole life has raced against the best horses in all of North America. But he's actually making a big drop down in class. Last week he was a beaten favorite, by the way. So he's really looking to redeem himself. Um, only main competition seems to be number one, and that's I Like Dreamin', who's also been racing tough, and that's at Yonkers. Bolt the door, accomplished veteran coming off back-to-back -back third place finishes, dropping down in class tonight, and he's as big a favorite as you can get here at one to nine, and leads now for George Napolitano Jr. Got stung just a bit around that turn. Second is Cobalt Man, one of several dropping down into this class tonight. Something in the wind is third, then I Like Dreamin'. On the outside, that's rocking the house first over for Andrew McCarthy. Inside of him, sixth is Cheyenne Raider at the back, Mosey Terror, and Jacked Up also heads to the outside. Half 55 and four, 29 and one, second panel. No sweat there on the front stretch for Bolt the Doer, and he's willingly leading here by about a length. Over Cobalt Man, he's stretching it out maybe a length and a quarter now as the pace picks up. Outside Rock in the house, not making much happen. First over, and now taking third back on the inside is something in the wind. I like Dreamin' is fifth. Getting backed up outside is uh, Mosey Terror, and then Jacked Up and Cheyenne Raider. Three quarters reached 122 and 2. 26 and 3 hung up on the board there by Bolt the Door. Hasn't been able to quite shake Cobalt Man who's trying him on the outside. Then further back to something in the wind and I like dreaming. Top of the stretch, Bolt the Door now separates by two and a half links there. Cobalt Man couldn't get to him. Far outside, I like dreaming closing inside something in the wind. But the class showing up here for Bolt the Door. Bolt the Door shows off with a very speedy performance doing all the work on the front. He wins by two and 149 and 4 with George Napolitano Jr. in the bike for Peter Foley, who is the trainer. Never an anxious moment. Nobody knocking on the door of Bolt the Door. Okay. I like dreaming with second. Something in the wind picked up the show spot. Now, if Steve was here and I said something in the wind, I'd do one of these, but I, I wouldn't do that to my lady friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump right into the next race. Still at Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs, non winners of 22500 Last five starts. The purse is $21,000. Number four is Word Power. He's the favorite. Second last time out in a speedy 148 and 3. And then number two, Sparky Mark. And number seven, Big Time Promise. Also, they're getting some play, and they're co favorites at second choices. And Sparky Mark, the one laying it down. Pierce going to try to calm things down now. Good spot for Rock and Amadeus, who won the last time he was here in. June. Jimmy Tactor has him nestled in the pocket. Then comes Hillbilly Hanover third. Word Power is at even money. He sits fourth there for Simon Allard and now heads out first over giving cover to Big Time Promise who's looking for his third straight. The back easy no on E Street plan. Half 54 and 3. 28 and 4 second panel. Things
things normalized a bit there. And now Sparky Mark picking it up again. Stretches his lead to a length and a half there over Rock and Amadeus. Word power first over and grinding within two and three quarters of the lead and suddenly coming up quick. Boxed in fourth hill. Billy Hanover, big time promise. Found the live cover there and he's moving into contention. And at the back, East Street Plan and Easy Noah still have a chance as well. They're all chasing Sparky Mark at three quarters, 122 and two, 27 and four, third panel. Sparky Mark still holding off word power. No slides into the pocket for a bit of cover. Big time promise comes up third, further back to Rock and Amadeus fading. Top of the stretch and now word power comes out once again. Pierce trying to get more out of Sparky Mark. Further back, big time promise. It's word power and Sparky Mark, word power, word power. Sparky Mark led the way he set off the teletimers as the pace setter, but it was word power. After he got away fourth, he makes a first step move, paces home the fastest, gets up in the final stride, wins by just a head in 149 and three with Simon Allard in the sulky. Finishing second was Sparky Mark. He really fought hard and third went to big time promise. Now the next race we're going to show you from Pocono was a claiming race. So these horses, the price tag on their heads, $27,500. Not bad. I want to do a little bit of window shopping if you're there. Yeah, Why yeah. Not? If you're a lady, you know, and you want to do some shopping and you're There's sick of horse. buying shoes, go for a racehorse. They actually can pay yeah. you back. Shoes just, they look nice, but you know, no income coming back, right? All right, yes, yeah, so the first is $17,000. By the way, there's two horses to watch in here. Number four is Jungle of Terror with Rock and Ron Pierce in the Sulky. And number five is BJ's Remote with George Napolitano Jr. Both of these guys are co-favorites on the tow board at eight to five. On top, Jungle of Terror takes him to the quarter now in 26 and four-fifths. They straighten it out with Jungle of Terror moving up in class, but winner of two of his last three. And Ron Pierce has him on the front end, leading it by a length over BJ's Rameau, the eight to five favorite in the pocket seat for George Knapp. The pace slows now. City Hall is third. It goes single file to uh, Connors Concord. Then comes Bruising and Cruising fifth. Giddy Up Blackfly, an upset winner last time in this class, is sixth around the turn, and Delco Liar trails. They stayed in line through the front there to the half. They get their 56 and 1, 29 and 2, second panel. Pierce couldn't have asked for anything better for Jungle of Terror, was able to really slow things down. He leads it here by a length and still a tight hold. Now he picks it up, trying to stretch it out from BJ's Rameau. On the outside, first over is Giddy Up Blackfly, has about three to make up. City Hall is boxed in, but only two off the lead now. Delgo Liar moves up fifth, then Connors Concord, and at the back, Bruising and Cruising. Three quarters, one point. 24 and 1, 28 even third panel. Jungle of Terror now facing a stern test on the outside from Giddy Up Blackfly. And still BJ's Ramoa threat in the pocket. Further back there to Delco Liar outside and City Hall in. Top of the stretch. Jungle of Terror trying to get more out of this one. But now on the inside, BJ's Ramo moving on past. BJ's Ramo had the trip and gets past for George Knapp. It's BJ's Ramo. Jungle of Terror leaves alertly, paces by the first quarter. 26 and 4, and then he's able to back down the half. Uh, he's on top. He's like just, just low. And I, I think he totally has it in the bag. <laughs> However, BJ's remote, he's stalking right there. The two hole comes home the fast, just, just a smidgen faster, right? Then juggle a terror, and he ends up winning with George Napolitano Jr. 151 and 2 is the winning time for BJ's remote. Jungle of Terror settles for second, and Giddy Up Black Fly, which is like the weirdest name ever. That's an odd one. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, anyway, he was third. <laughs> all right, not bad. Now stay with us. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we're giving you all of the great action from the week from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. You won't want to miss it. And up on the outside, drop the ball, forces yet another lead change. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Week. Right now, we're going to 
show you all of the action from last week here at Harris, Philadelphia. We have some splendid races to show you. We're going to start, I know, big vocabulary word. <laughs> We're going to start with Friday, August 15th. The race there, it was the feature mare's race, and it was doozy. It was. The first, by the way, $30,000. Number six, drop the ball, better's choice. She has made $1.4 million in her career, and she's a multi-stakes winner. She's a favorite here at four to five. Number seven, Shelly Scape, Hall of Famer, John Campbell in the bike. And number five is Jersey Licious. Again, no stranger to big stakes events. This is a star-studded field. Jersey Licious settles down into the pocket. No, she doesn't. She's right back on the attack on the outside, and she moves up to take the lead. Drop the ball, stays to the outside as well. Shell escape away fourth. Maka wish to the inside fifth, followed by Magic Starlight sixth, and the two trailers, Montenegro and Regal Electric, quarters up 26 and four. And up on the outside, drop the ball, forces yet another lead change. Jersey Licious back to second. Fast and feisty on the inside, third under the finish line the first time. Shell escape under a good Campbell hold fourth. Here comes Magic Starlight now. Driving up to the outside. Maka Wish shuffled in six as they go around the turn. Regal Electra commits to the outside. Seventh. Trailing the field. Montenegro. Halftime 54 and 3. 28 and 1 for the quarter. They race up the back stretch and drop the ball. Leads it by a length. Jersey Licious tracking in the pocket. Second. Shell Escape now driving up first over. Fast and feisty. Shuffled in fourth as they make their way past five eights. Magic Starlight trying to stay with cover to the outside of a pinned in Maka Wish. Then in seventh, Regal Electra in the trailer is Montenegro. About eight lengths front from back. Leaders still drop the ball as they go around the far turn. Shell escape the challenger. Three quarters, 121 and two. Inside third is Jersey Licious. Now free is fast and feisty. Inside Maka Wish saving ground. Off the cones, fast and feisty from fourth. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Drop the ball, trying to see it through on the far outside. Fast and feisty picks up the chase in between us and Shell escape. Free and driving up the inside. Maka Wish dropped the ball. Here comes Fast and Feisty on the outside. Super early in the mile, there was already like three lead changes, but it ends up being drop the ball, getting to the front, and really leading the way around the oval uh, until the last part of the oval when it was Fast and Feisty. She really loves that trip she's getting. George Napolitano knows the horse that he has, pulls that right line, goes around, drop the ball, wins in 150 flat, and the payoff, a biggie. $33 and 20 cents for fast and feisty drop the ball was second and third went to maka wish i'm gonna go right into the next race Sounds good. all right Take all right away. yeah thank you <laughs> we're gonna go to non-winners of 17,500 last five the purse is twenty thousand dollars number four is my temujin and this is a new zealand native and he's got eric carlson in the bike eight to five favorite and number eight is craven the beach looking for three wins in a row number six is quick jolt Step up in class after a really impressive start last time out. Craven the Beach got the broad of it. Three wide that entire quarter, but is going to move up now to take the lean. Quick jolt back to second. Southwestern Dream is back to third. Here comes Mike Temujin driving up uncovered. Artist Rally looks to pick up cover now. Inside World Monroe stuffed in sixth. Outside seventh. Dreams are for you. And trailing the field. Last of all as they make their way to the half is lean on you. But Craven the Beach up by four lengths. Inside Quick jolt. 54 for the halves. They race up the back stretch. By Temujin grinding up first over, but still three lengths behind. Outside, Artist Rally fourth now. Southwestern Dream inside with no place to go. Dreams are for you is third up sixth. Inside, World Monroe. And the trailer is lean on you on their approach to three quarters. Craven the beat still with that three-length advantage. Outside, My Temujin second. Quick jolt is at a loose pocket throughout. Now starts to take closer order. Southwestern Dream looking for racing room. Outside, Artist Rally failing off cover. World Monroe looks for room by three quarters and 121 and four. Three wide, here comes Dreams Are For You. As they straighten the way for the stretch drive, Craven the Beach trying to survive the disastrous first quarters up by a lane. Quick Jolts trying to get up the inside. Outside My Temujin, three to a drive. Craven the Beach inside Quick Jolt. My Temujin grinding. Quick Jolts coming through, down to the finish. Quick Jolt. So like everybody leaves out of there, right?
wait. And then Craven the Beach has like an obstacle course just to get to the front. But once he makes the front, then he sprints off a, a couple lengths in front of the rest of the field. Um, but, you know, he's got that whole deal going on in the beginning of the mile. Then he gets a three-quarter pole in 121 and four. I just think it caught up with him. Craven the Beach raced gigantic and finished second. So, who is the leader? Quick Joel, who ends up going up the passing lane, getting a good trip. He wins, and they pay 1080 Again, a nice. nice price here. George Napolitano was in the bike for this. You know, I'm thinking we should declare this show the official George Napolitano Junior. I think we said his name about 10 times yeah, already. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations, George Napolitano. <laughs> this is your and life you know on what? PA Harness Week. <laughs> he also has a little SJ of himself. Well, a little bobblehead. Oh, himself. that's right. Everybody cool has a bobblehead. It's a bobblehead day. Yeah, all right. It's kind of cool. <laughs> but... Her family is also pretty cool. If you guys don't know that, I mean, they're kind of a big deal around these parts. <laughs> and we're going to talk about a big race that was really important to them. Race six on Sunday. Your mom had a horse racing in that one. Yes, yes. And this was a big deal. So it's the winners over, which is the feature race of the week. The purse is thirty thousand dollars. Number seven is Wake Up Peter. He's the public choice, and he's been racing against tougher competition. This should be a little easier for him. Number eight is Handsome Henry K. Won this class last time out. And and then there's number three, just a jolt. He was fourth to handsome Henry K in the last race, okay? But this is my family's horse, and of course I'll be rooting for him. 26 and four for the opening quarter, and it's handsome Henry K who has the lead by a length, just a jolt in the pocket, still parked out Malaku Swad. Inside Statesman defending pylon position. Moving to the outside, now there goes Wake Up Peter as uh, Malaku Swad drops in fourth, and Wake Up Peter takes up first over position as they go around the turn. A sweet ride now, second. And over moving up in a live outer flow at a boy damn the trailer adventure bound seven lengths away from the lead 55 and four for the half rated 29 second quarter up the bank stretch for handsome henry k outside wake up peter first up just a jolt has had the pocket journey throughout statesman on the inside fourth outside a sweet ride second up fifth three lengths away from the lead at a boy dance third up into the flow adventure bound into seven past the tiring malaku swat around the turn they go handsome henry K outside wake up Peter still fighting three quarters 123 and one just a jolt on the inside third a sweet ride now emerging three wide statesman looking for racing room coming three wide with covers at a boy Dan as they straighten away for the stretch drive can handsome Henry K do it again just a jolt towards the inside now a sweet ride on the far outside at a boy Dan deep stretched her five across handsome Henry K with the lead towards the inside just a jolt grandstand side at a boy Dan tight for win. Handsome Henry K busts out, gets the lead. He's able to slow it down, but then he's got pressure from Wake Up Peter. These two kind of just battle it out, and then, uh, you know, just a jolt. I mean, he's like, la di da, I'm in the two hole. I'm just gonna like hang out here. He ends up coming up the passing lane. He wins in 151 and one. Atta boy came in second from the back of the pack. By the way, it was like, shoo, where did he come from? Uh, Handsome K took third. Just a jolt. Fabulous this year. I just want to say stats real quick. This horse has had 25 starts with 13 wins. Five but she's seconds. Not bragging, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm not bragging. I'm just stating the facts. I mean, yeah. And uh, three thirds. Congratulations to my mom and my stepdad, Joanne Looney King and Jim King Jr., the trainers, and my dad's BFF, Jack Dayton, owns the horse. So oh, that's nice. like super great. Oh, Vic Kirby drove, by the way. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Thanks for that win. <laughs> well, we do have to take one final break but keep it right here because coming up we're going to chat with the driver of Mick Wicked, David Miller and we've also got a big upset to show you from Tioga. And Father Patrick gets his cue right now from Yannick Chagra. Tonight it's race night. where the biggest events roll like thunder all season long. At Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, race night is your time to shine. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. You know, Heather, this summer, I'm Mick Lovin, this Mick fabulous horse. Do you maybe know his name? I'm Mick crazy over him. Uh, He's watching J.K. Anna Venera foiled again, Sweet Lou. No, um, Heather. Sebastian K. Mick Wicked. Oh, Mick Wicked. Mick, oh, Mick, duh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the 
The driver of McWicked is David Miller, or as we like to say, David McMiller. Hey. <laughs> anyway, we saw him finish second in a dead heat earlier in the show. We're going to get a, um, a little um, update on McWicked and find out how excited David Miller is about the upcoming jug. In this Mick interview. David, just tell me about the race. I know a lot of people were shocked that McWicked got beat. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he got beat by a good horse, though, you know. Um, you know, he might not have been on top of his game uh, for whatever reason that night. Uh, everything went great. He got around the track great. He felt super. Um, just didn't have it on the end there. Um, I asked uh, Casey about if they scoped him or not, and she wasn't able to that night. So I haven't heard anything. Uh, I know he went to the oxygen chamber like he always does. So uh, <clears throat> we'll just chalk it up to, uh, you know, he got beat. So um, it's going to happen. Hopefully that's, that's it for the year and go back to his winning ways. Even the great ones get beat, right? <laughs> so what's up with his card? Because he's got a couple really big races still happening for the stake season. Yeah, you know, uh, he's, he's actually got the PA Sires. So uh, he goes to Poconos next and then uh, uh, on to the Sire Stake final. Um, then he goes to Delaware. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> he's still in good shape. He's still sound. And uh, I think he's going to have a good, good next month. When you say Delaware, of course, we're not talking about the state of. <laughs> we were talking about Delaware, Ohio, the little brown jug. That's always really exciting. And isn't it nice to go into a horse, into the race with a horse like McWicked? Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, it, it's always good to be there, but when you got a shot of winning, uh, it's actually uh, makes it uh, makes it worthwhile. I, I shouldn't say make it worthwhile because I would go if I drove something out of the eight hole, you know. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking forward looking forward to it you know I really uh, I like to see him get over that track I, I bet he would go a big mile. Thanks so much to David Miller for joining us in this week's show now we're going to head out to Tioga with a three-year-old trotting colt and a big name in this one Father Patrick. Yes the Tompkins Memorial now Father Patrick he's the number four in here champion trotter the favorite going into the race obviously because he has just been so incredible this year and a world champion and in the Hamiltonian, though, where he was also the favorite, he went off stride. However, um, I mean, Yannick has talked about that. His driver kind of saying it wasn't really the horse's fault. He's kind of got a little, you know, um, I don't know, uh, behind the gate a little bit excited. So, you know, people are forgiving him for going off stride in the Hamiltonian. And he's still a great horse. He deserves to be the favorite in this race. Let's see how he does. Father Patrick remains the one they're chasing with three eighths to go. He's got a comfortable length and a half lead. He's yet to be tested. Pilustrious tracks along in second, two back to Datsyuk in the third position as they head to the quarter pole. Didi's hitman broke stride while five from the front, so another transcript's going to take over fourth, but another transcript has eight lengths to make up still. Three quarters, 124 and four. The tempo picks up and Father Patrick's going to be chased in by Datsyuk. Hillustrious is trying to stay with them, but was relegated to third spot. They're into the stretch. Father Patrick, a half length in front, now called upon for more. Datsyuk is hard driven to give chase. These two down to the line. Datsyuk ahead in front. Father Patrick digging back in. Datsyuk wins! Father Patrick lands in the pocket early and then ends up making his move very easily to the front. But then Yannick Jengra and Father Patrick put on the gas. But Datsyuk, he's sitting there and he's like, Somebody's got to make a move, right, on Father Patrick? Might as well be him. That's exactly right. How'd you know he was thinking that? <laughs> um, <laughs> she's a horse whisperer all of a sudden, <laughs> right? All right, so <laughs> Datsuk and Charlie Norris end up winning this race and won 53 and one fastest ever at Tioga Downs for a three-year-old trotting gelding. Father Patrick was second. Well, we have to go. We are out of time. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Cheryl McBride. SJ says goodbye. So does Heather. We'll see you next time. I'm on PA Harness Week.